Aisha as sometimes, and we would pray it earlier than sometimes. This next uh, enlivening of a sunnah is sleeping before fajr. Now if you're paying attention, you would say, how is that enlivening of the sunnah? We all sleep before fajr. And in the subhanAllah, one shaykh, he said something really beautiful, and he said, and from the sunnahs of the Prophet ﷺ, that the communities have lost, is sleeping before fajr. They've lost it. And so someone says, like, how did we lose it? We're all sleeping before fajr. Nobody's awake at that time. The Prophet ﷺ, he used to pray Qiyamul Layl. And from his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would not pray Qiyamul Layl all the way till Fajr. From his sunnah is that an hour to an hour and a half, and I calculated it, basically dividing the, um, the clock in our time, it's about sleeping an hour before Fajr. The Prophet, that was his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After praying Qiyam, he would wait one hour of sleep and then uh, get up for Salat al-Fajr. And as we said, Wathabah, he would jump out of his bed to go and pray uh, Salat al-Fajr and lead the, the Muslims in Jama'ah. Right? And that's an enliv- uh, a sunnah to be in life, is to actually make the intention to pray Qiyam, so that you can go to sleep before Fajr, inshaAllah. We also see a sunnah that um, is not totally lost, but inshaAllah ta'ala we can work on it. And that is staying awake after Fajr until the sun rises. Staying awake after Fajr until the sun rises. You can almost see, like the Prophet is uh, disciplining the Ummah, that they should not be sleeping after Fajr. They should not be sleeping after Fajr. As one of the uh, companions, radiallahu anhu, he saw his son sleeping in that Sahar time. Like, you know, like, it's, uh, Sahar time is before Fajr, basically in the morning uh, periods. And, you know, he woke him up, he said, come, get up, this is not the time to sleep. He says, this is the time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divides the provision amongst his ibad. This is the time for you to do your business. And so this isn't the time to sleep, meaning that after Fajr is not a time to sleep. If you sleep, you, like we said, you pray to Isha and go to sleep, you will have the power to get up at Fajr and the power to stay awake after that and a new system in your life will happen. Enlivening of the sunnah also is that the Prophet wasallam told us to make wudu before we go to sleep. Now this is a sunnah that a lot of people don't do. That they're like, every time they go for a salah, they're like, I already have wudu. Right? So even for salah, and the sunnah of the Prophet he would always make wudu for salah. Whether he had wudu or not, that was his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whether he broke it or not. So it's not that if you don't have wudu, you're now, uh, you know, there's no benefit in making the wudu. That there's always that benefit to making wudu. So this is a person who's going to sleep. They make wudu, ka wudu is salah. Exactly like the wudu for salah, they make the wudu. Now, I, I was thinking about this. I said to myself, there has to be something in this that will bring a dunya benefit to the person. I, but I couldn't get what it was. And actually, subhanAllah, for this lecture, I interviewed one of the teachers here at al Huda School, who I always notice every single day from the four or five years that I've known this brother, that he's always energetic from the beginning of the day till the end of the day. And if I ask the principal of the school, he knows exactly who that is. Do you guys want to guess who it is? Someone I guess who I'm talking about? I just want to know if you know who I'm talking about. You don't know. Yeah, that's right. Okay, you guys know. See, I told you you know. Everybody knows. This brother, after Salat al Jamaat today, I interviewed him to try to get his secret. And one of the things he said, and subhanAllah, you know, brother Auni, I don't know if it's here, maybe his family is here, but he said that he only sleeps six hours every night. He only sleeps six hours, not the nine to ten hours that will get you killed, you know. He only sleeps six hours and he said that one of the things that he does is he makes wudu before going to sleep. And he never misses this dua, the dua before going to sleep. And I said, subhanAllah, the making of wudu before going to sleep, non-Muslims will say it's good to take a bath before going to sleep. They're almost following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. People are like, I'm not going to take a whole bath. But if they only knew the sunnah of the wudu, they don't have to take a bath. Because what the wudu, and they actually say, no, a bath, if it's too close to sleeping, all that excessive water might keep you awake. But the, the, uh, the small amount of water that a person uses for wudu, like subhanAllah, look at this. The water evaporates off of the body. And it will cool your body down. And if you know how sleep works, they say, if you've, like, it's hot right now, right? You're feeling hot. And it's, um, 
in a hot environment, you might get like drowsy, but you can't go to sleep. If it's a hot summer night, you're like restless on a hot summer night. You can't sleep. There has to be coolness. Turn on the air conditioner, your body cools and you go to sleep. And so what the wudu naturally does is cool off your body. It cools off your body and it induces sleep. And so I'll, I'll read this to you. It says, to drop off, this is a non-Muslim speaking, to drop off, we must cool off. Meaning that to go to sleep, your body has to be cooled. Body temperature and the brain sleep-wake cycle are closely linked. Your body tem- temperature and how you go to sleep and how you wake. If it's a hot day, that's why hot summer nights can cause restless sleep. SubhanAllah. Okay, inshallah, I know um, we're coming to the conclusion. So I just want to go quickly regarding some makruhat, regarding uh, sleeping. Makruh, things that are disliked in the Sharia. Number one, is that it's disliked, and this is from, um, from the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, that they dislike, and, and these are the generations of the Ummah that were successful, and we want to follow what they had. They dislike for a person to be asleep in the morning time. So that time, for example, when you, from Fajr time till 9 o'clock, it doesn't matter when you're going to work, that you should not be sleeping at that time. And inshallah ta'ala, if you get a chance to teach everybody about Islam and they realize this, they will... And I don't know about like the Japanese style or something like that. I'm sure they have different styles. But in many like Muslim countries, the day starts at like 7 a.m. and it finishes at Duhr time. And people go to sleep, they take their nap, they have ghada, they take a nap, wake up at asr, and then the whole day is free. And this is like the blessedness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ The person who turns from my dhikr, they have a, a constrained lifestyle. And one of the shiyukh, and I know there's people in the UK right now who are listening to this lecture, and I know it's very late and they should be going to sleep. Um, this sheikh went to the UK, and I noticed this in the UK, their cars are so tiny. They don't have American SUVs there. They're just these, uh, they're just tiny cars and tiny houses, and tiny apartments. If you've ever been to the UK, everything's so tiny. I don't know if it's just my body here or something like that. It's just everything's so tiny there. And this sheikh, when he went to the UK, he said, Subhanallah, these are, it's a non-Muslim country. They turned their backs on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah made their life constrained. Everything in their life is a rat race. Everything's tight, everything's economical, they gotta save money, they gotta save this, save that, and so on and so forth. So, uh, from the makruhat is that a person shouldn't be sleeping uh, in, that, in those morning hours. From the makruhat that we know as well is to sleep on the stomach. A person, a person should not be sleeping on their stomach. And I know people, they just like, they just gotta sleep on their stomach, or they say, I'm not actually on my stomach, I'm like kind of, it's a little bit odd. No, don't sleep on your stomach, get off your stomach. The Prophet sallallahu said, and this is a Hassan hadith uh, narrated, uh, it's in uh, Muslim the Imam Ahmad, narrated from Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw someone sleeping on his stomach and he said, Inna hadihi ba'ja la yuhibbuha Allah. That this is a reclining that is not loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know there's another hadith that speaks about that this is the way the people of hellfire uh, sleep, uh, lie in hellfire, but Allah alam of the authenticity of, uh, of that hadith. As well, if a person wants to be successful in their sleep pattern, they have to stay away from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have to stay away from the disobedience of Allah azza wa jal. As um, Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, and there's many examples of this, but just give me an example of our ulama. He said, rahimahullah, that I was denied qiyamul layl because of a sin that I committed five months ago. Meaning that his inability to wake up in the middle of the night, and it doesn't mean he's not praying fajr, he's not praying qiyamul layl. Is because of a sin that was committed, and so we realize that our sins directly affect also our sleep patterns. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Don't sleep after Asr. This is actually, like I said, the sleep patterns in, in a non-Muslim country is like 9 to 5. So when a person gets home after 5, they're so exhausted that they have to sleep at that time. So you ask yourself, when you go home from work, do you go to sleep or not? And many of you say, yes, I do. It's makruh to sleep at that time. And um, dislike, as you said, the Sahaba, radiallahu anhu, there's not a specific hadith regarding it, but this is from uh, the Blessed Generations. As one of the ulama said that whoever